Praise be to God. Hallelujah. My name is John Gitu. Born again this wonderful morning. Thanking God for his goodness and even for his mercies. I am, in the, I am a son in the house. And I continue to thank God and to bless him. Walking under the leadership of our bishop and the anointed servants of the Lord in the house. Therefore, in Absentia, I want to appreciate our bishop and our mom, wherever they are this morning. And also, I want to thank our pastors. Pastor Beatrice is in the house. Our pastors, Pastor Richard, is also in the house. Our pastor, Pastor Deuri Wangombe, is also in the house. All the leaders, the ministry team, and every other leader in, uh, in this ministry, may the good Lord continue to bless you. Buona Eswa Persifa. Very well, uh, I'm married to Grace Ghetto, who is not here with us this morning uh, for reasons that uh, were actually beyond us. We are expecting some visitors immediately after this service. And for that reason, Akamua Kubaki Nyuma, so that our Shuguri Kiev, Boneswa Persifa. However, our, our children are here, some of them. Of course, Moja Amenda Sunday School, Mwingine Akwapa, and we thank God for his amazing love. The encounter. To say the encounter. Supernatural encounter. Kindly walk with me. Supernatural encounter. Divine encounter. We have just said that the lives of these dear ones who went for the encounter their lives will never be the same again. How many believe it? How many believe it? All right, if you believe it, I also want you to say with me, and my life, my life will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. That continues to be my humble prayer for each one of us, that even as we continue to encounter God in various ways, our lives will never be the same again. And so this morning, we will be speaking about supernatural encounter. Supernatural encounter, you could still call it divine encounter. Quite a number of scriptures, that, but then we might not be able, time may not allow us to read all of them. I would ask the media to give us John 5, John 5. John chapter 5, 2 to 9. Amen. Can we read together? One, two, let's go. In these lay a great multitude of important folk, all bright, hot, withered. <laughs> Amen. I think I may have to. All right, we can continue. Withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. was made whole of whatever disease he had. Verse 5 says, And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And immediately the man was made whole 
and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day, amen. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, you never gather your people in vain. And this morning, Abba Father, speak to each one of us, Abba Father. One word, oh God. Yes, one word. Just one word from you can make a difference in our lives. So what we pray, Lord, this morning is that, Lord, you may speak to us. You may minister to us, Abba Father. We are expectant to receive from you. Have your way in this service in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. John 5. 2 to 9 presents a case of a man who was sick, who was lame. And the Bible uh, clearly records that this man was in that condition for more than 30 years, for, for 38 years. And when he was sitting at the edge of that river, this man was simply expecting his miracle. So many people were coming, they were getting healed, and this man just remained at that point, simply because there was no one quick enough to push him into the pool to receive his miracle. And it is also possible that some of us might have been dwelling with the situation for so long, and we have been praying day in, day out, Lord, when will you come through for me? We know our cases individually. We do know our cases individually. But this morning, I want to encourage someone. The Lord is about to come. The Lord is coming. The Lord is here. He's here to do that which no man can do for you and me. The, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he appeared, the situation of this man changed. The situation of this man got better. He was restored. May the good Lord restore you this morning in the name of Jesus. May his restoration be upon you this morning in the name of Jesus. This, this sick man simply encountered a divine experience. That is something he has been looking forward to. He has been praying, but that was his moment. That was his day. And this could be your day as well. And therefore, when you're talking about a divine encounter, we are simply saying that these are uh, powerful, life-changing moments where individuals come face to face with the presence of God. Yes, supernatural encounters, we are saying, are powerful, life-changing moments where individuals come face to face with the presence of God. And when you're talking about the presence of God. We are simply talking about an, an overwhelming sense, an overwhelming sense of God's presence. An overwhelming sense of who? God's presence. Oh, hallelujah. This, the encounters, we are talking about the supernatural encounters, often serve as turning points. When we experience the divine uh, presence or encounters or the supernatural encounters, we receive what we call the turning points. And our lives are never the same again. The turning points in one's spiritual journey leading to transformation and a deeper connection. So when this comes our way, we get that divine connection. Are you ready for your miracle today? Are you ready for your miracle today? If you are ready, God is here and he will not disappoint you. Yes, in other words, you cannot remain the same once you have had a divine encounter. The lives of these dear ones who are here, their lives will never be the same again. But then there is a condition. They have to walk in one, obedience. They have to do what? To walk in obedience. Otherwise, whatever else and everything else that they learned at the encounter can simply remain as such if they don't play their part. But as we divine, when this happens, that is the divine encounter, the person receives specific guidance, messages, or even blessings that shape, that shape 
their lives. Bwana is wapwesifa. Yes, God is always working. Working to make our situations, like working to make our lives better. Day in, day out. Even when we don't seem to know it, he's always at work. Amen? God is always at work. Divine or supernatural encounters can establish a personal, intimate, and transformative relationship with God in all his faith, in all his fullness as a father and a son and as a Holy Spirit. So what you're saying, brethren, this morning, we must surrender our total being to our God. There is no way you can say that you want to walk with God and then it's like you don't want to give your whole, your whole to him. You want God to hold your hand and to walk with you, but you're not faithful. You're not ready to obey his commandments. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. Some of the things that actually distract us from having that uh, divine encounter with the Holy Spirit are the things that we experience in our day-to-day -day lives. Such that they make us to remove our eyes off God. Praise be to God. The things that we encounter day in, day out, some of them, they are family-related. Others are uh, job-related. They make us somehow remove our eyes from, from God. Do you remember what happened in the Garden of Eden? When Adam and Eve removed their eyes from God, something went wrong. And therefore, as believers today, if we are going to have a, a, a divine encounter, then we must fix, make sure that our eyes are fixed on God. Now, some of the people who received divine encounter, who experienced this uh, in the Bible, and we know their stories very well. One of them is Abraham. And we know his story. Uh, Media, if you could give us Genesis 12, verse uh, 1 to 3. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy... Uh, help me to read that. And from thy father's house unto a lad that I will show thee. The verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3 says, And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. This is Abraham when he was actually receiving instructions from God. And it is not easy when you're told that God comes and tells you, I want to relocate you from your family, from the place of your dwelling and take you to an unknown place. But the unknown place was only unknown to Abraham. God knew where he was taking him. Why? Because God is all knowing. And therefore, even at times, we will really receive instructions from God, instructing us to do this and that. And sometimes you wonder, surely this is what God you want me to do? This is where you want to take me? And at times, we act contrary to the instructions. And when we do so, we miss the divine encounters. Bwana Yesu wa we miss that which God wanted to accomplish through us. And therefore, brethren, brothers and sisters, this morning, can we resolve that we'll be keen enough to listen to what God is saying or telling us day in, day out? In our prayers of, in our moments of prayer, in our moments of praise and worship, we have just had a very powerful session here of praise and worship. We have prayed. Yes, some of us, have received, they have encountered their divine moment. And you can take it. Their lives will never be the same again. So every other time that uh, we receive instructions from God and we act on them, 
then we do receive our moments of breakthrough. God appointed Jacob through a dream, media team, uh, Genesis 28, 10 to 17. Hallelujah. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. Come on church, you can help me to read this. Verse 2 says, For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. 16 says, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, surely the Lord is in this place. I did not know. Verse 17, he was afraid and said, what an awesome place this is. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of of heaven. Now this is Jacob himself. And Jacob, we see that just like Abraham was faithful to act upon the instructions that he received. And he said, surely I know that the Lord is here. There before he was not aware. But this time he came to realize that God was there with him. And we can go on and on and talk of Joseph, how he encountered God through two dreams. We can talk of Moses, how he was commissioned through a burning bush. We could talk of Isaiah when he had a divine encounter through a vision. We can also talk about Paul, Paul, who was actually converted. It was, we can talk about Saul, who was converted to Paul after receiving uh, Jesus as his personal savior and his journey. We know it. We know the journey of Paul began from that moment. And us, brethren, this morning, brothers and sisters, we can put our names in those names. We can say that I am the Abraham of today. We, I am the Jacob of today. I am the Joseph of today. I am the Paul of today. And the moment you agree with God's word, your life get eternal out. The moment we walk under the counsel of God, our lives get eternal out, a divine eternal out. It is important to know that all the men and women who were called and used by God had one thing in common. They impacted their generations, their territories, their societies, the governments of the day, and the nation with the kingdom of God. And today, brothers and sisters, God continues to use supernatural methods to commission and empower his people to impact the world for his kingdom. The other day, our pastor, Pastor Richard, was reminding us about finding our purpose. Finding our purpose. We are simply saying that we are not just here. God has called us for a purpose. And we need to pray and ask of the Lord to show us and to teach us his ways so that we can know he, our purpose. You are an ambassador of Christ wherever you will ever find yourself. You influence, you are a man or a woman or a lady of influence wherever you find yourself. Why? Because you carry the presence of God with you. 
Praise be to God. You carry the presence of God wherever you, you go. Amen. And thank you so much, Pastor Richard, for uh, enlightening us the other day. And of course, coming with a loaf of bread here. Uh, some of us next time come with a soda. Eh? <laughs> and a Fanta, a Fanta soda. Those who don't know, what, they know what I'm talking about. The bread and the Fanta. That is one thing that we really used to enjoy. Divine encounters can occur during prayer. Hallelujah. Divine encounters can occur when? During prayer, during worship, during meditation, or even when in everyday life when we are open to God's leading. Amen? So in your moment of prayer, listen to what God is saying. In your moment of worship, kindly listen to what God is saying. In your day-to-day -day life, learn to listen to what God is saying. He's saying, when someone has a genuine personal encounter with Jesus Christ as their Savior, their heart is impacted by God's love and grace. And the certainty of knowing they need to be forgiven and rescued by him. But after salvation, after salvation, they need impactful encounters with the Holy Spirit that bring empowerment. We are simply saying that the moment we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that was not all. Hello? There is more. And this is why we pray for the reading of the Holy Spirit. Because the moment we allow the Holy Spirit to read us, we encounter him. We encounter the divine moments. We are able to walk victoriously. Praise be to God. Brethren, that God wants to reveal himself to us in a continuous way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God want, wants to reveal himself to us in a continuous, not just for a moment. Not just for a moment. Leo nataka ku praise. The next moment to take praise. No. Those special moments with God ought to be there so that we can experience uh, God in a mighty way. We get to, we, when we do so, we come to know God as the Almighty. We know Him as a Father. We know Him as our, as our provider. We know he, Him as our miracle worker. We know Him as our healer and our protector. We come to a point of realization that God is our deliverer. He is our supplier of everything. Longing to walk with God moment after moment. Hallelujah. This morning, this morning, one of us, Pastor Ken, uh, Ken Chitara, shared with us in our group, that is celebration group, about seeking the presence of God. Seeking the presence of? Seeking the presence of? Indeed, that ought to be our, our prayer. That indeed, we will seek the presence of God moment after moment. Thank you so much, Pastor Ken. We thank God uh, for you. Brethren, one of my, one of, every one of, our, of us must humbly accept the way in which God calls them in order to complete his commission for them on earth. And the question at this moment we may want to ask ourselves, are we faithful enough? Are you faithful? Am I faithful enough? When we receive this call from God, are we are we? Are we Faithful enough to act according to the way God himself instructs us. Some of us behave like Jonah. We know the story of Jonah. He was instructed to do this, to walk this way. Then he decided to walk the other direction. When we receive the instructions of God, when we have those special moments with God, 
we must always ask ourselves, where are we as far as our Christian journey is concerned? Only then, and I say only then, that we will have a smooth walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what are we talking about? We are simply saying that this events of the supernatural encounters remind us that God's presence can manifest in ways we least expect. When you allow the flow of the Holy Spirit in your life, then the manifestation, the manifestation, in ways that you least expect. And I know we all have situations the sicknesses are there. The sicknesses are there. We have challenges in our homes. We have challenges in our families. And at that point, point we wonder how. How? Lord, is this your will? Surely is this your will? But then we are saying, we can allow God to have his control, total charge in every situation. Bana is what we see for. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. You can say hi to your neighbor. Just kidogo to Munok, just in case. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. God desires to do extraordinary through ordinary people like me and you. Hallelujah. Did you get that? That God desires to do extraordinary through ordinary people like me and, and you. Only when we allow the flow of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? Yes. And this is why we can say, come and pray for me. Shikoa Jesus, you come and pray for me. You pray and God heals. Amen? This is why we can ask of this when we join hands. Because the word of the Lord is so clear. What two or three agree on. Then it happens. Vanessa Persifa. The flow of the Holy Spirit. The divine, the divine, the divine encounters. As we continue talking about the divine encounters or the supernatural encounters, it is also good to point out that uh, indeed they can happen in two ways. The supernatural encounters can happen in two ways. One, there are those given by God in his sovereignty. And this is a special type of situation where the Lord will uh, grant people divine encounters. Hallelujah. Yes, God will just come and have an encounter with you in his own time. Not the time that we want. And in the second scenario, we find that there are those that sought by God's children who are hungry and thirsty. You can say, God, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, and therefore I want to encounter you in my situation. And since God is faithful, indeed he will come through for you. Bona is a persifa. While many divine encounters reported in the Bible were unexpected, like Paul's on the road to Damascus, and we all know the story of Paul. Others were diligently pursued, as in the case of a woman suffering from the bro, uh, from the flow of blood. Vanessa Persifa. When Paul encountered his divine uh, experience, he was not expecting. He was actually on his way, doing what he used to do, persecuting the Christians. But again, God said, enough is. And from that point, he got a divine turnaround in his life. But then, that was a case where God intervened. What about the case of this woman who had, who had a niche of blood for 12 years? Or better still, the case of the bride, but Myers. These are men who say, this is my moment, and I will seize it. But I saw a and therefore the woman with the issue of blood had enough faith. And he, she took a step of faith, went and touched the garment of, and then, then she received her healing. 
There and then she had her own divine encounter. Bwanaesu wa sifa. And I, this morning, I may not be able to tell what is it that you have been struggling with. What is that that you have been calling God to come through for you? You know it. In whatever situation, our God is able. Hallelujah. Our God is? He is more than able to do that which we can ever imagine or even think of. You can decide, I will go and touch the hem of his garment. And my situation will change. You can decide, I will cry unto him, Lord, son of David, remember me. And there lies your divine moment. Your situation will change. Brothers and sisters, it is good for us to remind ourselves that these divine encounters that we are talking about, these divine or special moments that we have been talking about this morning, and we can all as believers seek them. Why? Because these are promises of God. When you invite God in your own situation, he will never disappoint. Surely his timing might not be our timing, but he will come through. He will come through for us. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Amen. Our, our lives changing. Are our situations changing? We confess so. And then, then you receive your miracle. That is the kind of faith Dr. Loni has been reminding us here time and again about having faith. If you confess it, then it happens. Um, the other day, Pastor uh, Beatles was talking about, uh, was reminding us about the case of Balaam and his donkey. Balaam was on his way, having received instructions from Balak to go and curse the Israelites. Bwanaesu wa but on his way, he encountered his divine moment. And there was a turnaround. Instead of going and cursing the Israelites, that thing, his mission changed from that moment. Through the animal, through the donkey. Indeed, God can use anything, anyone. Because again, he created everything to bring that their divine moment in your life. And therefore, in, in Balaam's case, instead of going to curse the Israelites, his mission was cut short. Indeed, he encountered the age of the Lord in multiple ways. This is the case of Balaam. First, the case of Balaam highlights the power and authority of the Lord over man plans and desires. He had a mission to go and do otherwise, but God intervened. This morning you could be having mission to go elsewhere other than doing what the Lord has instructed you to do. God can intervene. And when he does, yours is to act and obey. Second, it demonstrates the Lord's love and protection. Of Israel, despite Balaam's initial intentions to cast them. And we are the Israelites this morning. Yes, we are the children of God this morning. Can you touch yourself and say, I am the child of God this morning. I am a child of God. And any intention of the enemy will not reach to me in Jesus' name. What the enemy had intended for you this morning, God has intervened. You know the intention of the enemy, even today as you woke up, prepared yourself so that you can go to church, the enemy had some other plans to make sure that you don't reach here. Yes. Believe it or not. But God in his own ways intervened and here you are. Yes, the rains are all over. We could have had enough reasons to say, today, this morning, I'm just going to stay at home. And that will be it. But then God quickened that spirit in you. You need to be in my house. 
because you need to hear what I have prepared for you this morning. What the enemy has intended to harm, God will bring a turn around in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That sickness that we have in our homes. Whatever challenges that we have been going through, thinking that those challenges will bring us down, they will not. That marriage that is about to go down, it will not because again God is in control and he's doing something about it. Hallelujah. As Paul and some of us have been crying day in, day, in, day out concerning our, our children, our youth. We are asking God, Lord, can you intervene? And sure enough, God is doing that. Amen? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Come on, appreciate the Lord. Appreciate the Lord. We can do better. Amen, amen. Indeed, God is doing it. And lastly, in the case of Balaam, it is a reminder that when we align our will with God's will, blessings will ultimately, ultimately flow in us. When we allow the will of God to prevail in our lives, blessings will locate us. The favor of the Lord will locate us. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. The Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? You can see that in the book of Numbers 22 and verse 28. That is the donkey speaking to Hallelujah. What about the case of Gideon? Hmm? The Gideon received, uh, this man of God received instructions from the Lord to read the Israelites. But when he tried to compare his army with the enemy's army, he could not believe it. He had some doubts in him. But then he, act, he decided to act boldly and believe what God was telling him. But that's what I the thousands and thousands of the armies of the enemy who were out there, they were not able to overcome Gideon. God gave him super, a super natural encounter. He was able to defeat that vast enemy. What is your enemy today? How big is your enemy to this morning? We have just sung here, we have a big, big, we have a big, big, a God who is well able to do that which we cannot even imagine. The Midianites, were, even in their many numbers, were not able to stand against Gideon. Gideon's story reminds us that God can use anyone to do great things. You, my brother and my sister, you are a candidate this morning. God can use you to do great and mighty things in whatever position, in whatever place God has placed you. But nice what say for that, oh, you know, I don't have that ability. I'm not good in this. No, it's not about you. It's about God who has called you. And you can do it. You can make it. But nice what say for in your weaknesses, God can still use you mightily to give you victory, to take you to the other side of the sea because he's a God who can do that. Gideon's encounter with the angel taught him to trust in God and to have faith in him. Brothers and sisters, just like Gideon, can we totally um, resolve this morning that we will have unwavering faith in God. We will trust God fully in the name of Jesus. Talk to your neighbor and tell him or her, I will have total faith in God. I will trust him because he's dependable and reliable in Jesus' name. Divine encounters can change individuals as well as nations. Peace can be restored and we can be able to worship God. As a family. Time may not allow us. Because there are so many cases in the Bible. About the people. Who encountered. Who encountered uh, God. In various ways. But then. 
Whether you're talking about Manoah and his wife, whether we are talking about the shepherds, whether we are talking about the Anania um, of Damascus, and so many other people like David, we can get one thing. We can get to learn one thing. One, they always walked in obedience. They received instructions and they acted on them. I think I'm insisting on that so much this morning. Walking in obedience. Walking in. Walking in. That will bring all the difference in our lives. Do you always follow God's instructions to the letter? For instance, a very simple act. Here in our church, we dedicate children. And we always announce the date as to when the children will be dedicated. As parents, do we take that step of faith? Bring our children to the house of the Lord and, get, and have them dedicated. Do we? Do we? We could say yes because we see some of the parents coming here. But you can agree with me, there are quite a number who don't. Hallelujah. And we can pray today that indeed there will be a turn aloud. There will be? A, yes, because every other time we get to get messages to come and celebrate these gifts. Don't we? Don't we? We do. But when it comes to that moment of dedicating them, we don't see some of them. Oh, praise be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We can look at one more case as we conclude on that. We can look at the case of Cornelius. Media team, Acts 10, Acts 10, 1 to 8. Acts 10, 1 to 8. Acts 10, 1 to 8. 1, 2, let's go. There was a man in... Amen. We can go up to that point. We have been told that Cornelius, according to the scriptures, he was a good man. He prayed regularly. Have you been praying regularly? He was of good deeds. We, uh, if anything today, we can decide to emulate Cornelius. We can be people of prayer. Every Monday here, we have prayers. How many of us have been coming for prayers by a show of hand? Kindly, by just by a show of hand, again, just a handful of us. Just a handful of us. And look, we are so many. What happens? Today we can change that narrative that out of 100 people, we only have about 5 or 10 who have been coming for prayers. 
this morning we can decide, just like Cornelius will be people, will be men and women of prayer. Our good deeds, we will continue to do that because God has not for He will actually not forget every good thing that you do. In whatever capacity. I mean, we are not all blessed in the same way. Such that we will say that I don't have money so that I, I can't do this. I don't have enough grace so such that I cannot do this. God has given us, each one of us a level of grace to excel in whatever area that God has called you. Therefore, if it is serving, serve with all your heart. The praise and worship team, let them continue doing what they have been doing here. They have been blessing us. And God will continue to bless them mightily. And therefore, in this case of Cornelius, one, there is no doubt that God desires a continuous, intimate fellowship with his sons and daughters through our deeds. This encounter was, a, 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 was significant as it prayed by Votoro in the first recorded conversion of Gentiles. We know the story, and we can move on and move and read more and more about that. The first conversion of the Gentiles. Hallelujah. And we can emulate that man. Now, having said this, there are things that we must avoid as believers. Hallelujah. As we come to a cross, there are things that we must avoid as believers. If at all we are going to have what? These, these divine encounters. One of them, we must, or just before I go to that, we must pursue a life of holiness. Each one of us. We must pursue a life of? We must pursue a life of? Set yourself apart from worldly influences and sinful behaviors. Holiness attracts God's presence. Hello? That in our day-to-day -day life, we must, we must desire to walk in holiness. We must desire. We have no choice. We have no choice. And therefore, are we desiring to have a divine encounter with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? One, then we must keep off every single sin, every single sin that we know of. You can describe yourself as a person better the moment you find yourself in a private place. Vanessa Persifa, and we know these things that we do, and we know that they are not right. Hallelujah. Vanessa Persifa, and therefore, when we allow sin to persist in our lives, then that obstructs our connection with God. Hallelujah. When we allow sin to persist in our life, that interferes with that divine connection with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The other thing is that uh, we must, we must, we must actually walk under the commands of God. And therefore, the spirit of disobedience must not be our portion. Hallelujah. Disobedience. Can we keep off? Can we pray that God will help us? That this spirit of disobedience will not reign. Will not have a firm hold in our lives. But I saw Persifa. The issue of living an ungrateful life. Yeah? Some, some of us at times it becomes hard even to appreciate the smallest of the, of the detail. The many things that God do in our lives. Hallelujah. Then you say, Mungu wajanifanya hivi, Mungu wajanifanya hivi, hivi. Yeah, and you start complaining. And therefore, even at that moment when you're supposed to receive your miracle, you miss it. Hallelujah. 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 Being ungrateful. And this morning, we can decide, not me anymore. Not me anymore. 
Hallelujah. Not me anymore. Can I see by a show of hands? I'll be grateful. I'll be grateful to God. I'll be grateful to God in every moment. Brethren, in our Christian journey, we must remain sensitive. Sensitive to the promptings of God. We must remain sensitive to the prompting, to the promptings of God. Amen. Every supernatural encounter with God includes a change, empowerment, and an impact. It involves manifestation, whether visible or invisible, in which God introduces himself in such a way that our heart is radically transformed. Amen? And we can ask of the Lord, Lord, have a surgery of my heart. Have a surgery of? Work on me. Work on me. Can we say this together? Work on me, O oh Lord. Work on me, O oh Lord. Change my ways. Let your will prevail in my life. In Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. When someone has a true encounter with the Holy Spirit, it sparks within them a burning desire and a strong passion, a passion to seek and receive more of God. Hallelujah. As you seek God more and more in your life, he is faithful to continue increasing in your life. More of you, O oh God, is what I need. More of you, O oh God, is what I need in my? More of you, God, is what I need in my life. Bwana Persifa. Brethren, if anything, what you have been saying this morning is that we were created to live in the presence of God and to carry his presence wherever we go. Hallelujah. We were created to live in the presence of and carry his presence wherever we can that be your portion this week? Can this be, be your portion this week in the name of Jesus? Can you decide that, Lord, I want to see that divine, that divine dif difference in my life. I have done it before my way. Yes, I'm bo born again. But I've been, there are some things that I've been doing my way. Forgetting your ways. There are plans that I've been making, so many of them, without involving you. Today, God, my prayer is that you may help me to involve you in every way. In every plan. Our eyes must always remain on God. Our eyes must always remain on? Our eyes must always remain on God. And therefore this morning, as we conclude, it is my prayer that indeed God will help us. God will help us to have the divine encounters with him. We, the Holy Spirit, day in, day out. It doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter how we have been before. Today can be our turning point. And therefore, this morning, God is changing our stories. Hallelujah. God is changing our stories. Can you say with me, God is changing my story. God is, God is changing my story. God is giving me a new testimony. Come on, don't get tired. God is giving me a new testimony. I shall be called blessed of the Lord. Because God is giving me a new song. Yes, God is giving me a new song. And you can touch yourself as you confess this. God is changing my story. God is giving me a new story. He's giving me a new testimony. He's taking me to places unimagined. And therefore this morning I pray that may you remain above and above only. 
May you remain above and above doing the things of God as you ought to. Walking in his obedience. Hallelujah. Being, being, being sensitive to his instructions. And we can do this. We can do this. Not by our own strength, but by the grace of God. Some of these, some of these things might not be easy, but they are doable. Why? Because if God be for us. Hallelujah. If God be for us. Vanessa Persifa. Who can be against us? Hallelujah. Can I invite us to rise up, please? This morning, brothers and sisters, we have been talking about having divine connection with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But this journey, this amazing journey, only starts the moment we receive our first divine encounter. Hallelujah. This moment begins the moment we receive our first encounter. And our first encounter is always when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. Amen? And you could be here. And you are saying, this is my day. This is my moment. I want to say yes to Christ. I want to have a new beginning in my life. I'm tired of walking the way I've been walking. I am tired of doing things the way that I've been doing. Some of the things that you've been doing, you don't even understand them. But this could be your moment. And God is more than ready to intervene and to walk with you. He's ready to give you a newness of life. Hallelujah. Bana Yesu Apoesifa. And you want, if you want to say yes to Christ, just raise up your hand. Just raise up your hand if you want to say yes to Christ this morning. God is more than ready to embrace you. He's more than ready to embrace you this morning. He gave his best for you and me. He gave his best for you and me. And this is the moment. For you to say, yes, I've been doing things my own way. Lord, have your way in my life. I want to totally surrender to you. Are you there? Are you there? Oh, hallelujah. 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 My hallelujah belongs to my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve him. You deserve him. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, Lord, that is our confession this afternoon. The Lord, our praises, O oh God, belongs to you. You are our God and our Savior. You created us, O oh God, with a reason. And this morning, Abba Father, it is our humble cry, O oh God, that your will can prevail in our lives. Lord, we pray that you may have your way. We are blessed of you this afternoon, Abba Father. Even as we confess that our lives will never be the same again. Take charge and take control, Abba Father. The rest of this week is blessed, Abba Father. Because, Lord, you are going ahead of us, O oh God. Your presence will go ahead of us, our Father. We shall experience you, our Father, in our situations, O oh God, because you are a way maker. You are a destiny changer. You are a God 
who can do that which no man can do in the name of Jesus. We bless you. We honor you. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We can appreciate the Lord. You are blessed of the Lord. You are blessed of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you so much. We can have our seats.